Hi everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be setting up my budget for the January February period as I did get paid a tiny bit earlier this month and I just want to make sure I've got everything set up and ready to go. I did mention in my closeout from the other day that I made a couple of changes to some of my savings categories so we're going to look at that while I'm here as well. So if you've been with me before you know that I do budget in two currencies so we're going to start with my salary which comes to me in Omani Real. Um, my salary was 1,313. I didn't have any additional salary this month, which means that my total income was the 1313. So this first part of the budget just calculates my monthly spending. It did total up to 322 but, uh, when I estimated it, but I'm just gonna put it in here with you guys. So let's see how this breaks down. My fixed expenses don't really change. We've got home internet, which I just paid today, and that was 37. My electricity was 15, did I put 15 in? Oh no, I didn't actually, I'm going to change this. I had planned to put 15 in because I thought I'd be pretty close to the end, but I had a bit left. So I ended up putting in, I actually estimated 10, I put in nine and a half because this is one of the few things where they do add tax. And I know it's pretty OCD of me, but I didn't want to go over the 10, so I added nine and then just had the tax bring it up to nine and a half. The cleaner will be 20. So nothing changing there. Now we're going to go into my variable expenses. Now my plan initially was to maybe up my variables slightly this month because it was going to be quite a long month, but I've decided no, just just uh, suck it up and uh, be a bit more careful with your money so we don't have to make any massive changes. Uh, you know, some months are going to be longer, some months are going to be shorter, you just have to be able to manage it. So groceries is going to stay at 120 transport is going to stay at 25 i did have it up to 30 last time but i just don't think i need that much i was under budget last time but i always keep it a little bit higher because i had that one month when i went over so apparently i just can't learn to balance school is going to get 20 just for miscellaneous things i know i want to do a science experiment with the kids so i'll probably end up buying a few materials and beauty and health is going to get the usual 20. I do need to go and get um, one of my medicines from the pharmacy soon, but I should more than cover it. Miss Comb, which is really just for, uh, I don't know, light bulbs, batteries, those kinds of things that don't really go into any other category, is going to get 10. Now, I had counted for the home. Um, I was thinking of doing a home purchase and I did actually do that today, but I'm not counting it in this part of the budget because last month when i closed out my budget i had an overage of about i think it was 70 to 80 real i can't remember off the top of my head so i did buy a mirror and a little side table but a really pretty side table actually i'll try and stick a picture in here maybe but i'm not actually counting it in my spending here because it was extra money i had anyway so i'm just it cancels it out as far as i'm concerned so it doesn't need counting my mirror hasn't arrived yet it's going to be coming in the next few days but it was within that extra money I had, so I don't need to budget for it. Eating out is gonna stick at 10, I think, and my spending, I'm just going to leave at 25 as I usually do, and I put 25 in clothing as well. And altogether, that's going to leave me up to the 322 we discussed. So now let's go into my uh, home budget. So when I moved on, I had estimated when I made this budget that my salary was going to convert into about £2,000. I have sent it home and as you can see here I got a little bit higher on my salary. It was 2077 and I estimated my additional income to be 300 Now the salary has already hit my home account but the additional income isn't going to be with me for another, oh I want to say week and a half, something like that. So I'm going to work with the estimate I have even though I know the money is going to be four hundred and seventy nine fifty five which is a little bit higher but until it's in my account it's not real so we're just working with the lower number for now so here is my first account i did make a few changes to how things were kind of organized this month so i'll take you through those the investment portion was actually called savings before but i was investing it so there's no real change there i'm just renaming it to make it more accurate I don't foresee having any other spending this month, so I'm leaving that at zero. And the emergency fund has 250. Now, I did have the emergency fund in my other account. This is now in a subsection of this account. Uh, I checked and the other account I had it in, my account three, where I keep my sinking funds, doesn't actually attract interest. 
given that the emergency fund eventually is going to be one of my largest uh, sections, I suppose, of my bank account, and that the hope is to be able to leave it there and not touch it, fingers crossed, I would prefer it be earning interest. It's not the best rate of interest in the world, but it is at least something. Moving on to my account too, they are already filled in for the estimated annex and actual because they don't change. Um, I did up my pension slightly uh, this month because it's beginning of my of my year challenge to save 10,000. So I had to increase my contribution slightly. Okay, I need one of you guys, challenge. I need one of you to hold me accountable with this Readly subscription. Seriously, if next month I come here and I tell you I haven't really used it, but I don't really want to cancel it, blah, 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 blah. I need one of you to virtually smack me in the comments because I am usually really, really good at closing subscription accounts if I find I'm not using them because you can always use uh, subscribe again. You can always use them later if you need to, but there's no need to pay in the in-between. I don't know why I have such problems doing this with Readly. I don't know why I'm so attached because I haven't really been using it. And even though it's only nine pounds, like, I don't need to spend it. And I think my issue is when I got it, I got a small discount. And if I cancelled it and reopened it later, if I regretted it, I wouldn't get that discount. But the discount was not big and there's just no point keeping it. But here we are. I keep doing it. I keep saying I'm going to read it and I don't. So next month is a limit. If I come back to you and I haven't used it again, remind me, call me out, I can take it. But anyway, that's a total of 855 for the month and that should just sort itself out. The only thing I haven't done, I've sent the money to the account. With the pension, I haven't actually invested it into my pension yet. I've just sent it to my account because I went and checked how it was doing. I don't generally try to time the market, but there was a sudden really big spike and I don't want to buy the stock when it's so expensive when usually it really isn't. Now, if it doesn't go down again, then so be it. I'll keep going. I won't wait more than a few days, but I just want to give it a few days in case it is just a day or two spike and it does go down. Otherwise, it feels a bit wasteful, but we will see how that goes. I do recognize that timing the market is pointless, but it was just such a big change in such a short time gonna give it a second but regardless of that it will go into the pension soon no matter what the price is doing on to account three and my sinking funds so as you can see all the usual suspects but one of them is turned green here and i will explain it let's go from the top tax is getting its usual 100 uh travel i do currently intend to put at 300 and then my home tech now as you can see it's turned green that's because i decided instead of putting my usual 50 in i ended up just saying okay i'll put 178 58 in which is a really specific number but that should then be fully funded uh, which would be great because then i could just knock off that payment into it and medical has already been fully funded, which is why that payment's at zero. I'm not going to fill in the actual yet because my secondary income is what pays for this section mostly. Um, so I tend to do certain sinking funds last. Uh, so I'll update you on the closeout if I actually did that or not. But that is the plan because there's no need to keep paying small amounts if I can just knock it off. As you can see here, my gifts and Christmas have been combined. So my reason for that was quite simple. I counted up how many gifts and about how much I was expecting to spend on the gifts. And then I looked at how long I had to save. Now, obviously I need some for Christmas, but that's a year away. But a lot of the birthdays I have to buy for are in May and June. And I figured if I combined the gifts and Christmas into a general giving category, then I could put more a month. I could combine the payments into uh, one payment and then I can build it quicker. So I can build, 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 spend it in the mid-year, build, 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 send, uh, spend it at Christmas. And I think that just makes more sense because I don't need to take out of it as evenly as I put into it. And I think I'm gonna have a problem with um, my liquidity if I just try and put a little in each month to separate categories because I'll, I'll need them at different times. So I am planning for that to be 45, which will bring my balance up to 45. Uh, because I did empty it for Christmas. My national insurance contributions at the moment, I'm planning to be 250, but I do plan, depending on uh, the uh, other income hitting my account, 
I will probably up this because I do want to start focusing on these contributions and the faster I can pay it off, the faster I can free up that 250, which is a fairly large payment. And it just makes no sense for it to hang around, you know? It's not attracting any interest, but I just like it gone and uh, that will make it easier. Finally, we do have a new category. I think I discussed this with you. Uh, I do wear wigs and I have to um, rebuy them occasionally. So I'm just going to start a small sinking fund for hair. Uh, I'm literally only going to put about 15 a month in. I don't need to this month because I did actually purchase some this month. And I don't, as you can see from the goal of 150, I don't need to put in every month. So I'll probably start that next month. But the category is there just to prevent the extra spending that I ended up doing when I bought them this time. Okay, and I think that is about everything. I hope everyone's doing okay. Let me know how your January is going. I am trying to think of ways to increase how frequently I'm updating this channel because I find I do my startups and I do my closeouts, but I don't do much in between. I could maybe try doing a mid-month check-in just so you can see how things are going. It's been pretty smooth so far. But because I don't tend to do things like savings challenges and I'm not a cash stuffer, so I don't need to do that every week, it just ends up being a bit quiet. But I'm going to have to look into it and see what else I can put into the channel, maybe. If you have any suggestions or if you have anything you would like to see, please do let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to hear suggestions. Okay, everybody, I'll let you go there. Thank you so much for listening. Bye bye.